It's summertime. That means there's a lot of people traveling and you might actually have some travel plans yourself. Whether it's for fun or something you have to do out of necessity, I wanna talk about how you can make travel safe for your person with dementia. A lot of caregivers I talk to say that they are scared or fearful of traveling in terms of they don't know what they need to prepare, how to keep their loved ones safe, how to manage any sort of outbursts or difficulties that they may encounter during the travels. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five tips to help make traveling safe and for you to be as prepared as possible. I'm also going to share a bonus tip that I only have talked about with my Dementia Care Club members, so stay tuned till the end. When you're prepared for travel, it can reduce your stress and reduce and prevent possible frustration for your loved one with dementia. Real quick, what I wanna share with you, because it is summertime and you're probably seeing videos or talking to people who seem to be having a lot of fun, right? Summer seems to be associated with fun times, but I know for a dementia caregiver, fun can seem like another world. It can seem like another lifetime ago. And you might even be thinking, it's impossible to have fun. I'm just trying to struggle and get by in my day-to-day -day life. I'm just trying to hang on. This month, inside of my Dementia Care Club program, I'm hosting a special series called Fun and Caregiving. We're gonna talk about how to realistically have more fun yourself, how to have more fun with other people, and how to introduce more fun for your loved one with dementia. We're even gonna talk about how to put together a special activity box for your loved one. If you're interested in this limited time program, I invite you to click the link in the description below. It'll take you to a page that will give you all the details about the program. If you could use a little fun in your life and who couldn't, I invite you to join us. Before you leave for your trip, make sure you've considered these things in your packing and in your hotel arrangements. Number one, maintain familiarity. Is there anything that you can bring with you on this trip that would remind your loved one of home or bring them comfort? If there's something at home that often brings them comfort, can you bring this on the trip with you? This could be a pillow, a blanket, a picture. Also, do you have things labeled in the house, for instance, um, signs on the bathroom door or signs for the bedroom door to help them know where they are going? If so, bring those signs with you. Even if you don't use signs at home, perhaps you wanna bring some signs as long as they're able to see and read. You might wanna bring some basic labeled signs so that you can put them on the door to the bathroom, right? They're in a new environment, so they might not be able to remember where the bathroom is in this new environment, and having some labels and signs can help them with orienting to the surroundings. Also, as much as possible, try to stick to routine. If your loved one usually does something in the morning, is there a way to continue doing that thing in the morning wherever you are traveling? If they usually eat at certain times or use the restroom at certain times, you wanna to try to stick to those times as much as possible. All right, so that's tip number one, just maintain familiarity. Number two, pack food, treats, utensils that your loved one enjoys, they like, and are familiar. So if your loved one enjoys certain snacks or foods, can you make sure you have them on hand when you're traveling? If your loved one uses a particular utensil or silverware set or plate that makes it easier for them to eat, can you bring that with you on your travel? You might even want to consider a dignity bib as we've talked about in this video. Number three, consider bathing needs and incontinence issues. Your loved one might need a change of clothing, so have a bag on hand for a change of clean clothes, as well as another bag where you can put the soiled clothes in. Whatever products you need at home to help with bathing and incontinence, bring those with you on your travel. Obviously, having things like wet wipes on hand are very helpful as well. If your loved one requires a shower chair or a handheld shower, call the hotel you're staying at ahead of time and see what arrangements they have. Many hotels have handicap accessible rooms and they can make sure they either get you a room with the grab bars, um, handheld showers, and everything needed for your loved one. They might even be able to bring in some products like a shower chair. It never hurts to ask. Number four, prepare for any medical concerns. Prior to travel, check in with their main healthcare provider and see if that healthcare provider might have any concerns or considerations that you want to keep in mind as you prepare to travel. 
You can even see if they have any specific recommendations or tips related to your loved one's specific medical conditions. You also want to keep on hand your loved one's medical information, list of treating providers and doctors, and a list of their medications, as well as their actual medications. If you've created a dementia healthcare binder, like I talked about in this video, that's travel ready, you can grab and go. Also, bring a couple extra days of medication, right? Bring extra medication than you need for the trip, just in case there's any unexpected delays. Number five, consider safety. Are there any preparations or steps you can take right now before your trip to help increase safety? For instance, would it be beneficial to pack a nightlight for your loved one to see better at night? Does your loved one have an ID bracelet or an ID necklace that can identify somebody in the case of an emergency or in the case they are separated from you? You may want to consider a location with one main entrance and exit and alert the staff that your loved one should always be with you so that if they see your loved one alone, they can alert you. Okay, so that's the five tips on increasing safety preparing for a trip. I wanna share with you a bonus tip because there have been several people in my Dementia Care Club recently who have taken trips with their loved ones and they have gone well. But the one really important thing that's really helped them was all of the mental preparation ahead of time. We talked about how in your mind, when most people are preparing for trips, they're imagining all the great times. They're imagining how much fun they're gonna have. They're taking their loved one with dementia with them in hopes that their loved one is going to have such a great time, right? So all of the reasons for going on that trip are wonderful, but do the mental and emotional preparation ahead of time just in case your loved one doesn't seem to be enjoying it as much as you or doesn't seem to be enjoying it as much as you would like. It does not mean the trip was a waste. It does not mean you made the wrong decision. You made a decision out of the goodness of your heart, either because you wanted to or out of necessity, you had to travel and it's okay okay if things don't go perfectly or smoothly. Don't beat yourself up during the trip, right? Okay, that's what I have for you today. I would love to hear what travel tips do you have or that have helped you. Leave them in a comment below because your comment can help another Careblazer out there in the world. If you haven't already, hit the red subscribe button. It helps you get alerted when my videos are released. And most importantly, it helps YouTube know that there are caregivers out there who find this information helpful. And YouTube will put these videos in front of caregivers who have no idea these videos exist. It really means a lot. And finally, if you wanna join us for a little bit of fun in the summer, Fun for the month of July, that's our topic inside the Dementia Care Club. For a limited time, I'm giving anybody who wants access, access to this program that would normally only be available to my Dementia Care Club members, but for you, you can access it and sign up today. The link is in the description. All right, bye.